here and if others trickle in while while we're orienting then we'll welcome them as well so finding a comfortable posture whether that's sitting on the floor in a chair maybe it's lying down um, in shavasana or corpse pose if you're a yoga practitioner and just finding what the body needs in this moment if that's sitting up tall finding length in the spine and the eyes can be opened or closed i wanted to acknowledge first the virtual component of of where we are today logging in with our screens whether you're live on the call or you're listening to the recording just acknowledging this virtual reality that we're a part of that's held in our awareness and maybe noticing any judgments or thoughts or beliefs about this technology and not adding judgment to that, just noticing. Noticing this extra form of interconnection that we have and and noticing the very grounded sensation of the body, perhaps alongside with technology. Noticing that both can be in the same room at the same time. And I wanted to start with a reading around a theme of expectation which is often very involved in this mindfulness practice. And what we mean by mindfulness is the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose, non-judgmentally in the present moment. So what expectations do we bring into this practice and why is it important to notice them? And this is a passage from Tony Packer's book, The Light of Discovery, a contemplative teacher. She asks, is there an expectation in the mind right now that doing this practice will do something for you? Is there an expectation that something helpful may happen, maybe something that will resolve your problems? Instead, can there be awareness of that expectation? Is expectation blocking open awareness of what is going on right now in this very moment? It's a simple question. Can we hold it a moment, looking carefully, feeling expectation, actively engaging in the mind and body? When we expect wonderful things to happen in the future or terrible things, one doesn't hear the sound of the wind and rain. The breath and the heartbeat in this instant. Fantasy provides stimulation. When fantasy imagines a pleasant past or future, for example, imagining what will happen on the coming weekend when I'm with a friend or catastrophizing what might happen, can we see that fantasy creates constant new stimulation that drowns out the lack of stimulation right now? To really be with the raw stuff of this moment doesn't need labeling. We don't need to know it, just being has nothing to do with expectation. It has nothing to do with a goal. Having a goal is already moving away. From what? What are we moving away from? We think we can't bear it, the boredom, the depression, the pain, whatever is arising. We feel it's too awful, too difficult, it's not the right thing. But these are all thoughts, feelings, labels. What is the real thing, this instant, of not expecting anything?
So an invitation that whatever is arising for you as you sit here, as we start settling into a practice together, that whatever is here is just as it needs to be. That there's already a sense of wholeness in this mind and body. So that there's nowhere to go and nothing to do. The sense of coming home to what's already here. which is really quite liberating when we have nowhere to go and nothing to do that whatever is arising, whether it's pain or challenge or joy or sorrow, that we're already whole. We already have the capacity to meet what's here. And really this work of coming back to the present moment is just a reminder of of what we really are in this moment. So in a sense, we're putting a welcome mat out for our mind, our body, our spirit, our being. And perhaps just starting noticing the wholeness of the body sitting here. Not thoughts about the body, but just this felt sense of the muscles, the bones, the structure, perhaps the the seat of your body meeting the floor or a mat or a cushion. Really feeling what it's like to be here without expectation. And moving this attention to the fact that you're breathing, noticing the felt sense of your lungs moving in and out, expanding, contracting. And any expectations that might arise or any thoughts or judgments about why am I paying attention to the breath? Why am I sitting here? What do I need to do next? Where should I be? Where should I have been? Whatever is arising. Gently bring the attention back to the breath without rejecting anything or pushing anything away or clinging to anything. Just allowing any other stories to be on the sidelines as you bring your awareness gently back to this felt sense of breathing. Again, not the idea of breathing, but really the feeling of it. And whatever form that takes for you, whether it's noticing the nostrils as the wind moves in and out with the breath, or maybe it's noticing the expansion and contraction of the body, the three-dimensional qualities that are changing this up and down quality, whatever might capture your attention, your curiosity. And noticing any lack of sensation as well, inviting that into the awareness. Again, it's not that the breath itself is so important, it's the awareness what this attending is pointing to, our capacity to be aware 
in this moment, moment by moment. as if we can invite each new breath like a new beginning because it is it's never happened before it will never happen again in just this way and just being curious about any anything extra that's arising whether it's boredom or judgment or sleepiness or worry or emotion doesn't matter what it is just allowing that to be part of the practice and almost relishing every time distraction is noticed because that's a form of awareness just this noticing is waking up to distraction. Without judgment, but just this, wow, I see, I see what's happening and gently bring the attention back to the breath without judging or pushing away. And as I invite longer pauses into this meditation, noticing what might arise for you, whether it's happiness at having less instruction or desire to have more guidance or boredom or uncomfortableness with quiet and just trusting that you're practicing whatever is arising you're practicing in this moment of just noticing what's here as you follow the breath, breath by breath and any distractions, just following those as you bring yourself back. What we're really cultivating here is the ability to be with whatever arises. The ability to stay present in the moment and to bring yourself back to the present when there's a wandering away. And just noticing when we get caught up in expectations of what this present should be. Noticing that as a thought as well and how natural that is. As we bring ourselves back to just this felt sensation of the next inhale. And everything in the wings that might be calling you from your body or from your heart or from your mind. 
they're a part of it too. We're just shining a spotlight on breathing. You might notice the longer you're in practice that there's a, a learning happening. The noticing of mental patterns or emotional patterns that pull you out of this moment. perhaps habitual pulls to a certain topic or a certain feeling or an old pain in the body that feels relentless and not judging any of these experiences, which is almost a sense of gratitude for, for seeing how they're operating and the ability to continue to come back gently to this moment, this breath, knowing that we're not trying to get rid of anything, not trying to get rid of emotions or thoughts or challenges or beauty. Just really bringing ourselves back to this moment to see how it really is. And if the mind has wandered, just a gentle nudge back and a gratitude for noticing that it's wandered. And perhaps opening the awareness to just hold the whole body, not just the sensation of breathing, but just Inviting this felt sensation of the torso, the legs, the arms, the head, and in your entirety. Noticing how awareness can hold so many things in one, all of these different parts individually and as a whole. Just noticing what arises for you here, whatever it may be, whether there's a attending to a particular part of the body or particular positive sense of relaxation and the hands or the face or perhaps tension or, or perhaps a lightness and just the wholeness, whatever might be in your particular experience of the body as a whole in this moment.
And just coming back to this theme of expectation, remembering how when we arrived together in the beginning, there's this acknowledging of wholeness, nowhere to go, nothing to add to. If anything, in this practice, we're taking away these stories that make us less than we actually are. When by the very fact that we're breathing in this whole body that's holistically operating and keeping us alive, there's more right with us than wrong with us. And how the only place that we can really go to feel and appreciate this is just this moment. This one moment that we're fully alive. And perhaps in these last few moments of this practice, just inviting, if it's available to you, a sense of gratitude for this radical act of slowing down and just being, not having to add anything to who you are, but just uncovering the natural wisdom and intelligence of you, yourself, what's already here. However, that's speaking to you in this moment, whether it's in a challenging or nurturing way. And I invite you to allow the awareness that's following the body sensations to just expand into whatever you're noticing, whether that's still in the body or whether that's something that's coming through sounds in the room or through your vision, if your eyes are open or through your heart or your mind or all of it collectively. Just allowing the focus of the attention to be open. And this might feel a little disorienting and just welcoming whatever arises as we open our awareness to whatever's here for you. So we're shifting the anchor from the breath to the body to this sense of Choiceless, choiceless awareness. And I invite you to allow the awareness to shift once more as I, I offer a poem to close this meditation together and allowing the intelligence in your being right now to take what it needs and leave what isn't needed. And this is a poem that speaks to this 
theme of expectation and presence. And it's written by Rainier Maria Rilke. We have no reason to harbor any mistrust against our world, for it is not against us. If it has terrors, they are our terrors. If it has abysses, these abysses belong to us. If there are dangers, we must try to love them. And if only we could arrange our lives in accordance with the principle that tells us that we must always trust in the difficult, then what now appears to us to be alien will become our most intimate and trusted experience. How could we forget those ancient myths that stand at the beginning of all races? The myths about dragons that at the last moments are transformed into princesses. Perhaps all the dragons in our lives are only princesses waiting for us to act, just once with beauty and courage. Perhaps everything that frightens us is in its deepest essence something that is helpless, that wants our love. So you must not be frightened if sadness rises before you larger than any you've ever seen. If anxiety like light and cloud shadows moves over your hands and everything that you do. You must realize that something has happened to you. Life has not forgotten you, that it holds you in its hands and will not let you fall. Why do you want to shut out of your life any uneasiness, any miseries, or any depressions? For after all, you do not know what work these conditions are doing inside you. So, Thank you all so much for being here. And if your eyes are closed, I invite you to gently allow some light to enter as you transition out of the practice, but not with a sense of ending meditation. It's pervasiveness is invited into every moment of our lives. And it's more than just a practice. And at this point, we'll close the recording and, and keep the line open.